My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 5,314 kilometres so far and I've got 11,286 left to go. So far on the mission, I've survived alone in the desert, pissed blood, been robbed at gunpoint, thought I was going to be killed in the jungle, had my support van smashed to bits, and in this episode, I get attacked by dinosaurs, make some new friends, fight some children, and the thing we've all been dreading finally catches up with us. Someone asked for a, tr a trigger warning for all foot content, so here it is. Please subscribe and like the con like the what was it like the video and um, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Hit that little bell. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Hit the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss a single episode of this pure entertainment going on. In this episode, I get in a blister in episode. the depths of the Congo. I also. Shag a gorilla. <laughs> Look at that, man. Blister plasters, incredible invention, can't I? On a scale of broken to slightly less broken and pretty manageable, mm. where are you at? Don't know, mate. Don't know. We'll see. Reckon you got another 62k day in the locker real easy. That bicep. Wow. So massive. <laughs> Russ, is this where you want me to do some video editing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. That is wow. So we've got a plan, re Brazzaville. What is that plan? plan? This is the plan, girls and boys. Carry on running, normal day today. And then when I finish today, we're gonna bang it into Brazzaville. We're gonna swing by Cameroon Embassy real quick, pick up our visa. We already submitted our e visa application, so should be quite straightforward. Gus, whilst we're doing it, is gonna take the van, go and chat to a little carpenter who's gonna make some kind of shelf unit here. Notice we took the seat out and then we're gonna reconvene together, get back on road, hopefully late afternoon and get some more KMs in. This, this is the only logistical problem of the week. So for our for our weeks, it's actually pretty good. It's pretty decent, man. And we've I actually mean, got a plan for you it. You might have well. an area, but we don't know. Oh, nah. It's probably just a cold, mate. I'll be a reek. The fans are gonna wanna know. Is the bucket hat gone forever? <laughs> but I, I quite like this one. It's a vibe. Right, I need to leave. Right. I hit the road once more. I was feeling rough after my monster day, but the tarmac waits for nobody, so I smashed it anyway. The landscape was turning into beautiful grassland, and the temperature was still pretty bearable, so I was in good spirits by the first stop. Yo, yo, yo. Here he is. A bit stiff. They look a bit stiff. Yeah. <laughs> Did you manage to get eight hours last night? Did I? Rough. I just kept hearing maybe every 15 minutes while I was still awake. A little zzz, zzz. Oh, f off. <laughs> no, I fell asleep to the very calming sounds of. <laughs> yeah. There's so many dogs. I made this, the foolish, the most foolish mistake of them all. I left my light on all day. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that like, obviously every in every flying insect in the entire Congo rainforest is in my bed. <laughs> I was like, nah. You can't get rid of them. Nah. I, I'm not even joking. I committed like a mass homicide last night yeah. with them. The amount, like, I'm and talking like, at least yeah. 30, 40. Bro, uh, it's like we teleported to Avatar or some shit, man. Cause like that. There were so many insects I've never seen before. I also watched the hardest geezer have a full blown get out of bed like, what the fuck is that to a moth? Ma nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been called out hard. It's a fucking butterfly. Nah, nah, nah. It wasn't a moth, it was a tennis ball with wings. It was massive. <laughs> it was massive, bro. It's not just a butterfly, bro. It could have been a dinosaur, man. It was huge. Mate, they don't do anything. They're they just vibe. Yeah, but I, it was a di yeah. Mate, I thought it was a dinosaur. Yeah, it's a bit of a rough one last night, eh? Yeah. A bit of a rough one this morning, I imagine. Uh, yeah. Um, Russell, I need you to be really honest with me now. Are you going to make 60k today? Um, deciding which body part I use to knock Stan out. Is that a yes or a no then on the 60k front? What are you saying? Bro, I'm the captain, all right? I decide. Yeah, and I'm just asking what you've decided, captain. Don't know. The captain runs to his own river, boy. I don't answer questions. What the f no does that mean? No pressure what this time. Does that mean? No also, too if, many you, if, if your line now is no questions, we'll be No answered. questions, Stan. YouTube's gonna be a bit shit. 
Excuse me. <laughs> Russ gets into an interview and he's just like, no comment. No comment. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just going to read out this piece of paper that my uh, publicist just wrote me. There will be no further comment at this time. Mad that your publicist works for Nesquik. Yeah, it's crazy. Nice. It's crazy. I'm starting my big ball right here today, you know? Right. See if you can beat this lorry across the road. Oh, yeah. Farewell. I shook off my stiff legs and got back at it. Steering the great ship HMS Tarmac towards Tunisia. I pounded it for another 20k. Ignoring the pain from my pathetic legs with their pathetic blisters. Near the end, I bumped into an English speaking cyclist and struck up a conversation. Right, mate. You brought a guest? Yeah, yeah. Just met Marcus on the side of the road. So I thought I'd bring him over to say hello. He studied in the DRC. He's a, oh. a, a, a veterinary. Oh, wow. Do you want a drink? Do you need some water? What or energy drink? Energy drink. Mate, should we give him a perfect head? There you go, mate. What do you think? Good? So, <laughs> so you're cycling? Where are you going? I'm go I'm going to this village. Okay. I did bite just to the city. Okay. And then I come with it here. It, uh, it helps me sometimes to move around here. Yeah, it makes it easy. Nice to meet you man. Good to meet you too. Yeah. I like Marcus man. He was cool. He was cool. It's, it's interesting, it's like you don't see many bikes around here. 36 today. 36 degrees. Like yeah. Rough. Less hills though. Yeah. Different. How are the feet feeling? I've been thinking about them all morning since Maybe watching the... a lot better than... Foot episode. They, uh, when I watched the episode, I was like, oh yeah, my feet were well, well yeah. actually. Yeah. Does this count as a spoiler? Because it's afterwards, but it's before, but we haven't watched it, but we've experienced it. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Oh. Gus, what is one question you want to ask Russ? If you could just take like one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh. My immediate answer would be Domino's pineapple pizza with stuffed crust and a garlic and herb dip. Mm. But I couldn't do it to myself because it would ruin my body. Mate, it's half one and I've done a marathon. Mm. But just that 6 a.m. is just golden, bro. I hate waking up at 6 a.m. but it's worth it. Yeah, this morning I heard Russ's alarm go off and him just go, oh. <laughs> I was sleeping there, yeah, my head was there. I looked and I saw Gus and I went, just gotta get up and I just gotta get up. You're secretly hoping that Gus is out alive. Yes. I'm gonna have a nap after this, I think. Mm. Anyway, man, I'm yeah. Good. Yeah, Stan's not doing too good. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's the, wow, Stan, you, see, you can really see up my nose now. I got a comment on a YouTube video that said I look like um, Harry Potter at rock bottom. <laughs> that really is carnage though, because it's true. Like, they're absolutely right. Anyway. Algeria was always going to be a problem for us. We couldn't get the visa first time around. When we switched the route, we kind of just put that problem into the future. Basically, the big problem for us is that you, that foreigners cannot cross the Mauritania border into Algeria but it is the only border that is that we have any chance of getting through. The rest are all, they're just absolute no-goes, right? So for, for it to be possible for us to go through there, we'll have to get clearance from the absolute top, top people in the government in Algeria. So it's gonna be long, big problem, very hard to do. They've got 18K. 18K, here we go. My mind was on the future of the mission as I hit the road for my last 18k. Algeria had been the biggest roadblock for us since the mission started. They had denied our visa at the last minute, which was the reason we flipped the mission on its head and started in South Africa. We put it down as a future problem. But now, the future was only three months away and the problem still hadn't been solved. This could literally make or break the mission and it weighed heavy on my mind as I came to the finish line. You were done? Yeah, I was struggling a bit when it got to about 50 and then I thought, it, boy, these legs need to figure themselves out. You got a bit of a sprint on at the end. Yeah, just, just trying, to, trying to kick my legs into to doing something. Bought some mad snacks. Get your hands on one of them. Oh, got warm as well. Got the fresh, fresh. Oh, sh boy. Yeah. Bats on. Oh, these look sensational. Yeah, They're really good, man. Oh, yeah. Thoughts? That's an elite snack game. Right, we'll let you recover. Right. Onwards. Driver. We set off on a road to Brazzaville, driving two hours into the city 
eventually landing up at a cheap hotel to spend the night, ready for a day of shaking and moving in the morning. First thing, we headed to the centre of the city to park up the van. The embassy wasn't open yet, so Gus went to search for a carpenter. While he was gone, we took the time to check out Brazzaville's mighty cathedral. Stunning, isn't it? You're quite the religious man, Russ. What do you mm. say? Ah, oh, it's beautiful, man. It's long, like embossed grass. This was a beautiful place, but Gus was soon back and the time for sightseeing was over. We left Gus with the van and raced to the Cameroon Embassy. Bonjour. Bonjour. You guys look very comfortable. Comfortable or broken. Ooh. Inside. Where are we? Uh, are we are in the Cameroonian Embassy, currently waiting to be seen. Well, the one thing I can't stop thinking about is that apparently the Cameroon Embassy drinks fuel. Whoa, that's a good sense. It's complimentary to people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You have a little sip. Fuel is just international these days, you know. They're hitting it up in Congo. They saw me running, drinking it, they went, <laughs> Cool, but child, we have e-visas. Yeah. So we just need to put our visas into those things, and then they'll allow us in. Oh. The visa process was quick and easy for once, which made a nice change. And after they took our details, they printed them on the spot, and we were in and out in an hour. Things were looking good to get some running in later that day. We headed back to the cathedral to reconvene with Gus. The carpenters were busy building the shelves, so we had some waiting to do. Then, out of nowhere, all hell broke loose. They're dragging someone away there. I'm not entirely sure what just happened. No, me neither. I mean, this is a funeral, and then some people just started running. And they were chasing after a dude, they started... The guy with the big green pipe was running after a dude, like, pushed him to the ground, hit him with a stick a few times. They were, I saw them kid. chopping at another guy with a machete. Machete, man. Yeah, they were literally chopping at a guy in the street there with a the machete. There's a bike on its side. I just saw a dude running, dragging a machete across the floor, and, like, everyone running away from him. What the f*** just happened? Yeah. I don't know, there's a lot of people here, man. It's there's the biggest church. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people standing outside now. It was very odd. Like, everyone's very panicked looking. They're holding the gate closed, only letting in certain people. I'm not sure. This was a very strange situation for us. I still don't know exactly what happened in all the chaos, but it was a sobering moment and I'm pleasant to see. It wasn't our place to get involved, so all we could do was hope that everyone was okay and push on with the rest of the day. We decided to leave the car park though and go and visit the workshop to see how things were getting on. This is like an example of... Uh, what are you doing? Are you doing? Where are we, Ruth? Uh, we're in the carpentry place. Right, we'll see how that turns out then. Yeah, maybe. It was slow progress. Our shelves were still just a pile of wood at this point and time was ticking if I wanted to get any running in that day. As the guys worked, all we could do was wait. Where are we, Russ? We are in Brazzaville. Wait, whereabouts in Brazzaville? Waiting for the man to put some things in our van. But hang on, I thought that's where we were earlier, when it was still daylight. Yes, we're still there, we're still oh. waiting. Oh, sh If I knew it was gonna take this long, I wouldn't, we, I wouldn't have got shelves, it's not that important. Yeah. It's gonna be good, but it's like it's, it's not it's not, not worth not. taking a rest day for. No. So we're quite straight, let's be fair. But what can you do, man? What can we do now? What what do you what do you think we can do now, Stan? I think we should find out if he's definitely gonna finish it today. If it if he does, it doesn't really matter what time, because we have beds. So you can get some kit. I mean even right now it's thirty five degrees. I think we just passed the point of no return to say really. yeah. It was dark now and still our van was empty. Gus decided to get involved and help out, but the inside of the van was boiling, progress was slow, and he was getting more and more frustrated. Hours passed as everyone on the street shut up shop and went home. 
To be fair to the carpenters, they stuck at it. Just like the boys who towed the van, they were working with limited tools, way past closing time, in vicious heat, and eventually, after many design changes and loads of glue, they got it done. Hello, what time is it? Hello. It's um, 10 to 11. Yes, sir. It's been a long day here on Project Alpha. Honestly, was it worth it? Probably not. We got shelving. Isn't that amazing? Are you happy? Not really. <laughs> what? <laughs> Gus is broken. There's no privacy here, Gus. Sorry. How do you feel? Do you feel proud? It's an hour and a half drive here. Cameraman stands on the drive. Bang bang. I drove for a long two hours, squinting out of our scratched up plastic windscreen to a makeshift campsite near the start line and collapsed into bed. 6 a.m. yet again, what are you say? <laughs> like, it's just one slip up, boy. All it's right. not even a slip up. Like, it was just a logical decision. It's fair, dude. Yeah. It would have been stupid to wake up at 6 a.m. this morning. We drive back from Brazzaville to here. And I just found a place for us to sleep. I, I was going to, why didn't I drive? Because uh, you weren't, you were not with it, lad. I was, not, I was like, not even lucid. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm really ill at the yeah. moment, and I, I, I said I'd drive. Yeah, basically, the double champ stepped up, all right. Yes, right. How are your feet? What's the condition like before you put them away? This one, I thought it was giving me the same vibe as, you know, that um, that guy from Star Trek, Darth Sidious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit like a little angry man on the bottom of my foot, do you know what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. Just chill out, bro. Yeah. I'd like to see you play a role in Star Trek, man. In Star Trek, yeah. Yeah, you just get your lightsaber out. May the force just be, be like, you. all right, mate, I'm going to fucking slap you silly with it. <laughs> you cunt. <laughs> I think chuck another blitz pass on it. Pretend it doesn't exist. Calm. Best way to deal with stuff. Is that going to trauma? Yeah, trauma. Mental health problems. Nasty blisters. Achilles issues. Do you think you're going to be able to get a, a solid number in today? Yeah, not 60 though, bro. I mean, it depends how hot it gets. If it gets yeah. anywhere near as hot as it has been, 60's looking unlikely, boy. I was feeling good about the 60s as well. It's all right. Back to it tomorrow. Get back up on the daily starts and you should be all right. What do you think of this era shelf like? Do you think it's any good? Do you think it's a, per a work of an artisan? <laughs> Excellent work, wasn't it, Gus? Yeah. Like, I think it's very good that we decided not to make it ourselves, but leave it to the professionals. Yes. Did a good job. <laughs> they were quick. But, you know, look. It, it works. works. It works. They did a great job. Thanks, guys. Time to bang bang skeet skeet. Yeah. Here we go. Don't touch the road. Oh. <laughs> it felt good to be back on the road after my unexpected rest day. My body was feeling surprisingly good too. And the heat was bearable. So I smashed up the pristine road until it was nothing but rubble. I was keen to make sub 60k days a thing of the past and pushed on with maximum aggression, soon arriving at the 20k stop. How's it been? Yeah, it's actually not as hot, I don't think. No. We do have a real issue with the Back. solars though. Nothing's charging. Oh, right. Like zero. Uh, it was getting seven now. now. So we, we've called Harry to get in touch with the guys. This is a big problem. This be problemo. We fix one thing and then the next thing breaks. Mm. Very stuff. Okay, it's the end of an era. What's happening? Uh, we're saying goodbye to this camelback. It served its purpose, but she's a bit knackered. Yeah, I don't want to smell her before you ask. Yeah, it's bad. How many is that, how many is that camelback done? 4,700 kilometers? Something like that. That's a pretty decent shift, eh? Going to bounce. We've got an audience today. Yeah, we've made some friends. <laughs> <laughs> They're really cute kids, man. They are very cute. We've been ha having some shadow boxing wars. Um, yeah, so I taught them about the ones and twos. And then you keep doing that every single day for maybe like 300 days, <laughs> and then you run the entire length of Africa. Not a <laughs> I climbed into a, the privacy tent and ran at them. To war! <laughs> It's good times. Classic prank that. Classic prank. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow. We're being attacked, so you're gonna have to fight off the hordes before you can start. Oh, fifty-five, fam. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you soon, lad. I powered on, sending small humans flying like skittles as I went. Things were feeling good, but suddenly out of nowhere, I saw a turtle peeking out of its shell. Or rather, I felt it. Where are we going? We're gonna get some, uh, get some toilet paper for us. <laughs> it's an emergency toilet paper drop. Complete the mission you've been given, Gus. Russ! Russ! <laughs> emergency. <laughs> it's like a flying refuel. <laughs> Emptied and refreshed, I stomped the tarmac with newfound energy, blazing through dense, beautiful jungle and tiny villages to the next stop. How are we going? Good. Bad job. Nice. Yeah. How's it? Yeah, all right. It's f***ing <laughs> causing a crack here. Oh. Yeah. 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 Just showed him I still got the sauce. Mm. A couple of ones and twos mm. on the footy pitch, you know. We met a couple guys that uh, said they had a chat to you as well, a couple Americans. Oh, yeah, they were good guys, actually. Yeah, cool guys. Yeah, so we gave them our number and then they said if we need anything from Bras, they'll bring it up for us. Nice. One's a doctor, one's an electrician, and the one's a missionary. Nice. Mate, one of them yeah. was 86, that old guy, about 86 mm. years old. Really? He's a doctor. Wow. Yeah, um, very strange to hear an American accent, I can't lie. It's been a good break. Yes, yes. Time to hit it. Ça va? Ça va bien. I left the crowds behind and sped on as the jungle opened out to beautiful rolling grasslands. En route, I spotted a vast canyon through the thick vegetation. Always caught up with me halfway, midway through another incredible turtle encounter. Yo, bitch. You all good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to carry on. I'm just doing a bit of that. So I'm just... Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mostly okay. It's just like every now and again it will get a bit shooty, and I go, oh, just hold that for a minute, and then it will pass, and then I'll carry on. <laughs> what did you see on your run? And you saw a gorge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I couldn't really see it, but I kind of could. I could. See I'll see it and be like, I bet that looks good on the drive. Start running again. Cool, see you soon. I finally managed to get the meerkat back in its hole and sped up again for the last few kilometers, finally making it to the finish line. Yo, bonsoir. Bonsoir. Is that another 60k a day? It was. Bang, bang. That's impressive. I didn't think you'd get it in today. Seven. Nah, neither did I, to be honest. But it helped that it wasn't 8 million degrees. Mm. But let's have a look, actually, what temperature Yeah, it's been all right today. Best pace in a while today as well. Back in the six minute K regions. Still 34 today. What do you reckon the next major logistical issue is going to be? Someone getting ill. Well, yeah. we already are ill. Yeah. Um, I feel like a little bit ill, but. Oh, uh, do you play? Sorry. That's all right. Yeah. Who knows? Stay tuned. I'm I reckon. Probably won't take long. Probably take one episode for some to go wrong. I reckon we're going to get caught up in a huge fire explosion. Wow. Yeah, so all in, successful day, mission complete. See you next time. Oh, fuck. Bit, what, what is shagging it? on time, eh? But our next logistical issue was closer than we thought. Throughout all our time in the Congo, we'd been in dry season, and it was due to stay that way. The rainy season brought with it mashed up impassable roads for the van, which would cause huge issues for the future of the route. But all of our delays had left us dangerously close to the start of rainy season, and up to this point, I've been pure luck it hadn't caught up with us. Tonight was the night our luck changed as something brewed on the horizon. Thunder. In the next episode, we party with the locals, commit a crime, 
and the heavens finally open.